The National Gallery's newest exhibition is about more than just one man and his portraits. It offers a slice of 16th century Italian life. From Anatolian carpets to sculptures, the curators have sourced some of the objects painted in the portraits to highlight that Lorenzo Lotto was as interested in his surroundings as his sitters. And every portrait reflects identity. He's unique in that he has a very distinct informality in his approach to really any artwork, but especially portraits. There's a humor there, there's a strange oddity. He seems to be reimagining every subject anew. He's, he brings a new approach to every, every picture. He doesn't resort to formula. So those help, but really it's his empathy. He's very, he's very strongly empathetic of his sitters and, 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 and his portraits, and seems himself emotionally invested every time he paints somebody. Lorenzo Lotto was born in Venice in 1480. He travelled extensively within Italy, working in Treviso, Bergamo and the Italian Marche. In his early career, Lotto was commissioned to compose portraits of artisans, humanists, clerics and merchants. His work is bright and full of texture, his figures animated. What's really remarkable about Lorenzo Lotto is his intricate attention to detail. Look at the way the lines are rendered on the forehead. You can almost feel the voluminous fabric of his coat. It's like he was painting in HD, even way back in the 16th century. His compositions have great psychological depth. I think his legacy is as, as an artist who really painted his time uh, and revealed truths about it. I think when you go through his is an exhibition like this where you have portraits from around 1500 to the late 1540s. It's sort of a, a collective biography of Italian society at the time. And it reveals a lot about daily life and about daily concerns and about the rise of, a, of, of the middle class, which has become so important to European society, and about their emotional lives. So I think that's important. And that's what speaks to us today, because it's so direct, it's so, it's so emotionally available. Um, we have the same emotions as these people and we can kind of see it. The exhibition flows chronologically in order to illustrate how much darker and more melancholy his later work became. Not in the more cosmopolitan areas such as Venice, where he's from and indeed works for, many, for large parts of his career. He goes back to Venice a lot but he's, he has difficulty getting important, lucrative commissions there because people are not interested in his artwork anymore at this stage, in the later part of his career. Lotto's uniqueness lies in the subjects he chose. Instead of emperors and royalty, his focus on scholars, merchants and families from a variety of social backgrounds offer an incredible overview of life in 16th century Italy. Lorenzo Lotto Portraits is at the National Gallery until February next year. Miranda Atti, TRT World, London. To further explore the work of Lorenzo Lotto, I am now joined from London by the chief art critic for the Daily Telegraph, Mark Hudson. Thank you so much for being with us today, Mark. Uh, now, we know that uh, Lorenzo Lotto made many, many beautiful artworks throughout his career, but really came forward with his portraits. Tell me a bit about the characteristics of these portraits that brought him to the forefront of the art world. Well, there was a tradition in Renaissance painting of sort of allegorical portraits, which weren't necessarily, they, they, they were used real people, but they weren't supposed to represent the individual. They were represented as some quality or virtue, such as beauty or love or, you, you know, warrior prowess, the ideal warrior. And he took that, a sort of kind of narrative portrait, and he mixed that up with a very intensely realistic images of real people. So he had both aspects in one image, which gives them a very uh, distinctive quality. 
And the techniques he used in these portraits kind of uh, helped him do that, correct? Uh, he made them really realistic when we see these portraits. They are, some of them are, they're quite varied. Some of them are very realistic. I was looking at one of them, which is of a, the Bishop of Treviso near Venice, Bernardo de Rossi. And he shows all this guy's moles and imperfection in the skin, which is very unusual for the time, where they tended to try and make people look as ideal or as nice as possible. And even when I went up very close, I couldn't really see the brush marks. It almost looked like a very slightly blurred photograph. Quite strange. Well, Mark, tell me about um, the emotion and the concept of psychology that uh, Lorenzo was able to capture in these portraits. Well, he, he did it through this kind, this sort of narrative, this narrative approach. For example, in one of the most famous, famous of his uh, and very powerful of his portraits, he shows us a, a splendidly dressed Venetian woman probably an aristocrat, holding up a drawing of Lucretia, who was a heroine of ancient Rome, who was assaulted uh, uh, by, by, by a, a, an enemy of the family. And she, rather than being disgraced, she committed suicide. She killed herself. So this woman is, is showing us this image, and she's there with all her wedding ring and her wedding chain, showing she's a respectable woman. Somehow she's making a connection between herself and this very powerful ancient heroine. And then another one, a very, very famous one, which is called The Young Man with the Lizard. A um, very sad-looking young man is sitting there at a desk, uh, he's, on, on the table in front of him is a very large book, which you might assume was full of sad, melancholy poetry. It's actually, when you analyze it, it's a ledger from the family business. So he's a young man who's having to put aside the, you know, the, the, the pleasures and also the pains of being a young man and become part of the responsible adult world. So it's a kind of narrative psychology in a way. Mm -hmm. But it's very affecting. Mm -hmm, it is indeed. And do you know if he painted these portraits uh, during his time in Bergamo? Because uh, I know that that was the time uh, in his life where he started to explore the concept of psychology. And that's what kind of made him popular back then, wasn't it? Yeah, in Berg the, 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 the paintings from Bergamo in the exhibition are mostly double portraits. For example, paintings that were done to celebrate weddings. So you see the the, the, the man and the woman. And there's quite a comical one, in, 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 not, not exactly comic, but sort of very revealing one in which the husband who's a little bit older, looks, looks quite smug and complacent. And, the, and the, you see the wife beside him a little bit younger, looking very sort of hopeful about her marriage and, you know, full of trust. Now, Mark, did his um, artwork kind of become more and more melancholic as he grew older? It does become a bit darker. I think that the later paintings are maybe more conventional in a way. They, they don't have quite that sort of very distinctive, idiosyncratic, almost eccentric quality. But, they, yeah, they do become a little bit more darker and maybe more kind of fatalistic. A lot of religious in, in images of priests and saints. Mm -hmm. All right, Mark Hudson, thank you so much for joining us there from London for us. Not so.